Give no praise on the Abashima, Shabashima, Kwa, Kodash. Double honors on three apostles, a great milestone. And honor to brothers that be pushing this truth in sincerity for the four corners of the earth. And above our body are coming out here to give you this truth for the grace and mercy of Yahweh Bashima, Shabashima, Kwa, Kodash. And this is going to be a relatively quick video. And I'm going to be going into how hypocritical this group, IUIC, is. And how. <clears throat> basically they're showing you that they don't have their priorities straight through their actions and they talk all this jazz about raising up the 12 tribes of Israel of which the scriptures doesn't speak about raising up the 12 tribes of Israel the scriptures speak about the Mosai sifting the elect right Galatians 16 16 the Israel of the heavenly father Yahweh from the four corners of the earth by way of this truth the Most High ain't inter interested in masses. The scripture talks about how that you're supposed to enter at the straight gates. The scripture speaks about how that within the book of Second Ezra, how that there was going to be a, a small, small amount of people that was going to make it into the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shemesh, the first time around. Matter of fact, it's called a remnant. Okay, when you go into the book of Romans, the ninth chapter, no, Romans, I want to say Romans, the 11th chapter. I think it's Romans, the 11th chapter. It is Romans, the 11th chapter, because the seventh verse speaks about the elect. When you go into the book of Romans, the 11th chapter, it speaks about the elect and how that the Messiah has preserved a certain small number of people. He has preserved them so that they was going to make it on the chariot. So when these guys are speaking all of this craziness about raising up Israel and raising up black people, that should be a red flag because we know it's not about raising up nobody. It's about finding the elect. Doth not the scripture say, set a mark upon the men that sigh and cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. That's the book of Ezekiel, the ninth chapter on the fourth verse. How many scriptures are we going to go to that, to prove to you that this, this ain't about the masses? So many precepts. So many scriptures tell you that this ain't about the masses. This ain't some worldly intervention. We ain't worried about some entertainer. We ain't worried about some basketball player. They've got their consolation. How many scriptures you got to go to? Does not the scripture say that these people that's within the world, which we're going to be using this guy, Kyrie Irving again. Don't, don't, does not the scripture tell you that, that the Kyrie Irving's already got his consolation? Does not the scripture already tell you that this guy is going to be very difficult for him to wake up to this truth because he's, one, he's got his consolation prize. Two, okay, he's a rich man. The scripture speaks about how difficult it is for a rich man to make it within the kingdom. Okay? And the other point I wanted to make was that here it is there talking about all of this business about raising up, raising up, right? Here's a guy, and this is an important point. This is how you got to think about these individuals. These are, this is how you got to think about these guys. This is how you got to assess their mindset. They're talking all of this craziness about raising up the 12 tribes of Israel, right? All the Eagles, Hispanics, Native Americans, which is contrary to the scriptures. We're supposed to be worried about the elect. Really, we're just worried about, we should be worried about teaching. That's it. We should just be worried about teaching. And the Most High was going to do the lefty, heavy lifting. Worry about teaching and let the Lord do the heavy lifting, right? But let's go back to this point. And this is a very, very important point. So important. Okay, this is a very, very important point. Kyrie Irving has never done a day's work within this truth. And that's going to be the title of the video, right? Kyrie Irving has never stopped, has never done a day, day's work. And I'm going to call it Kyrie Irving has never done a, a day's work in this truth. Stop bearing false witness. Okay. Here it is. This dude has never done a day's work within this truth. He's never been out there with a garment. Never endorsed a, an Israelite camp per se. The, the dude posted a link and that was it. And these niggas went crazy. These niggas went crazy. The dribbling crazy dude. That crazy Irving. And the most I did bless him with the, with the skills with the basketball. He's a great entertainer when it comes to the basketball. But he is not a man of the Lord. He is not a man of the Lord. And here it is, you had a, a, a brother, a very sincere brother that's out there in the trenches, putting in work. And they're bearing false witness against him. That should, that, 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 against him. That should let you know what these men's intentions is all about. They're about the world. They're about the world, man. Here's a guy that's put the work in. And, and they got a problem with this guy. They're going to bear false witness with him. But a guy that's never done a day's work within his truth because he posted a link. And he's got a platform. They're all about that. These guys are about they, these guys are about the world, man. Let's get some precepts. I'm gonna go here to the first pre, precept. They're, they're all about the law, right? But what does the law say about 
bearing false witness. Okay? The Bible says you shall not bear, bear fault, fault, fault witness. Exodus 20 and, and 16. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, which thy neighbor, when they really, when you really get down into it, when you really get down into it, like level one of understanding this truth is your neighbor is an Israelite. A higher level than that is going to be a man of the Lord. Really, that's your neighbor. Okay, that's your neighbor. That's even a greater level of a neighbor. Let, let me put it like that. Not, not to say a guy that's outside of this truth. The Lord doesn't pertain unto him because that's still your neighbor. Right. <clears throat> but really, when you think about it, a higher level of a neighbor is going to be a brother within this truth. Okay. That's a higher level of thinking. Like, yeah, we, we got brothers in terms of Israelites, but the scripture says that who, who's your, who's your father? Who is your mother? Who is your brother? The men that are within this truth. So a neighbor on a higher level is a guy that's going to be, that's going to be out there within the trenches talking, you know, talk, 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 talking and teaching, especially a, a brother that's, that's sincere. Especially a brother that's sincere. Does not the scripture say you're supposed to debate, debate that cause with that neighbor? You're supposed to debate the cause with that neighbor, not to bear false witness. But when it comes to a guy that's dribbled a basketball and makes millions of dollars of pounds, they can't say nothing wrong about this guy. They can't say a word that's wrong with this guy. We stand with Kyrie. What about the brother that's been out there teaching the word? No, no, we're going to bear false witness with him. That should let you know what these dudes' intentions is all about. It's about the world, man. It's about making a statement out here within the world. They ain't about the truth. They ain't about the word of the Lord. They don't care about the men of the Lord. The real men of the Lord, they're concerned with a platform that they can get here within this within this world. And the scripture speaks about these guys within the book of Maccabees. How that they, they was more concerned about their platform. Sorry, not the Maccabees. Um, when Yahawashai was on the scene, there was particular men that was more concerned with their platform within this world that they may not lose their place with this with, with the Greeks. And they got a particular you know level of fame and uh, um um and yeah let's call it flame fame they got a particular level of flame out here fame out here Salakia yeah. they got a particular level of flame out here fame but the reality of the situation is that what the most I ain't concerned about the wide paths he's con he's concerned about the narrow paths and the narrow paths is the men that go out there they got maybe a couple thousand videos not a, a, a few hundred thousand videos a couple couple thousand of uh, your viewers Salakia yeah. it's the remnant. This should be clear, man. Okay, this should be clear. Let's go to the book of Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. And let's go to the point. This is going to be 16th verse. It's 14th verse. There was a little city and a few men within it. And there came a great king against it and besieged it. And built great, great back walls against it. And now there was found in it a poor wise man. And he, he by his wisdom delivered the city. Yet no man remembered that poor man. And we're those poor men. They call us bums, right? I mean, I mean the whole idea of this, these bum groups. That should let you know what these guys about are about. That should let you know these guys ain't about the word, man. They're about the glitz, the glamour and the world. Doesn't the scripture say the love of this world? Is enmity with the most high? Why am I out there supporting a guy that dribbles a basketball because he posted a link? What am I doing out there? Especially to put it out there on blast onto the people that's within the world? Man, that's that's terrible, man. We got new guys as, as touching the gospel of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Now, we might... Look, really? The most high is giving us the spiritual authority to, to, to slander you? Right? That's why you go to the book of um, Isaiah, the 29th chapter and the 8th verse, it says with stammering lips that goes into making mockery. But ultimately, we don't really be we don't really be like taking a piss like that. We just go into the scriptures and say these guys are going off. They're acting like niggas, etc, etc, etc. We just deal with the gospel, man. We just deal with the word. We ain't really been going out there making all kind of crazy claims, man. And more importantly, we don't bear false witness because that would be a violation of the law. They are all about the law, but it seems like the, the poor man is the one that's actually... Sticking to the law, of which part of the law is the name of the Lord. That's important. Part of the law is bearing false witness. That's important. This is the poor man's wisdom. And part of the law, which is the con controversy, is what do you do in a situation where a particular maiden gets taken against her will? That's part of the law. That's something that you have to deal with because you have to deal with it now. What are you going to do within that instance? 
And this is where they bear the false witness and call us all manner of, you know, I'm not going to use that word. But it's like, yo, okay, so amongst your congregation, what are you going to do in that particular situation? What are you going to do with that within that particular situation? You guys act like the Most High is not omni, uh, omnipresent, and omnipotent, all powerful, and all knowing. You, you guys like, act like he doesn't he doesn't create situations where you're gonna have to apply this particular law. Come on, man. Then I said, then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and that's the poor man's wisdom. Because if you're poor, if you're living destitute, you ain't clean cut. Crazy situations are gonna happen. Okay, and what I mean by that is. Most of these situations that you see out here where somebody gets taken against their will, it ain't clean cut and pristine like they're trying, the image that they're trying to present out there within the IUIC. These ain't clean cut, pristine situations. Here's the irony of it. When you look at the the, the, the lineage that the Mosai put Yahweh Shai through, it wasn't clean cut. <laughs> it wasn't no clean cut, thorough, pristine family uh, history. Right? Look at the look at his breath. wasn't That wasn't by the books. That's why Joseph wanted to put it away. He was like, "Yo, man, I don't want to make you an example. Let me put you put you put put you to the side until your, your the time passes." You want clean cut, man. You want the, the greatest historical standard, so to speak. But this is the image that they're trying to present. But my point is this: it was still lawful. It was still lawful. It was too lawful. When you look at the lineage and you look at all the history, it was open for the more, for, for all intents and purposes. It was, you know, for not, not every situation was lawful, right? Because King David committed adultery, but you know, the law, the, the law, the law was still there. Okay, the law was still there, and punishments was, was, was dished out when punishments was necessary. Okay, it was more side did jack up King David, but his word was that. When you go into the Davidic covenant, he, he'd already made a promise unto King David, going all the way back unto man Isaac. He wasn't going to depart away from King David like he departed away from King Saul. But, you know, that's a, that's a different story. All the point that, the, the point I'm trying to make is, is this. When you really go into the poor man's wisdom, like when you're in a destitute situation, particular things happen, what, what are you going to do? You know, when you're all, all lofty and rich and, and so on, you got to have things quote unquote perfect. But even in, even amongst them, they all kind of greasy situations that happen, and the law is supposed to be applied. Let me go to this next next scripture, man. I'm starting to ramble, so let me cut this down. I don't want to say something that's not fact, actual factual. First Timothy six and five. <clears throat> Perverse disputing of corrupt minds, destitute of the truth, supposing gainless godliness from such withdraw thyself. And this is how these guys are. This is how these guys are. They look at the, the world's riches and they look at these particular people out here within this world that are affluent and, 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 and they attach themselves to it. But a guy that's out here pushing this truth in sincerity, being out there on the trenches, that's got a track record of, 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 of uh, proclaiming the name Israel, got a proven track record of, of proclaiming the name Yahweh Shai, more importantly, and, and they slander that guy. But a guy that's just a bug out, committing all kind of adultery, Got all kind of tattoos, man. Just because he posted a link and he's got money. That's what's held in high esteem, man. Supposing gaining his godliness, man. Shalom. Give no praise on Pia Bashim Al-Shaq.